Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be showing you the top 10 legendary weapons in Borderlands 3's latest DLC, Bounty of Blood. These guns are the best of the best, and I'll be telling you what they do, who you need to farm to get them the quickest, and how you can use them to make easy work of Mayhem 10. Bounty of Blood gave us a lot of great guns, and do let me know what your favourite one is in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like or maybe even subscribe. It helps to keep me motivated and uploading videos, and let's crack into it. In no particular order, we begin this top 10 with the light show, which I would say is not just the most powerful pistol in DLC 3, but in the entire game. It's manufactured by Vladov, can come in any element, and has an increased chance to drop from Lasso Dactyl, a flying enemy who you fight in this area of the map, in the Obsidian Forest. The Light Show is everything you'd want in a pistol, a quick fire rate, deals heavy damage and has a decent magazine size, and it typically fires 4 pellets per shot at just the cost of 1 ammo. Because of the large number of pellets, the Light Show deals consistently high damage against all enemy types and bosses. There's really no area that it lacks in. It excels across the board, getting top marks in killing and thrilling. By coming in every element, it will always have a place in any combat situation. And it's a fantastic pistol that will see you through anything. Now to the Root, a sniper rifle that has an increased chance to drop from Latin Dixon a target of one of the crew challenges you can find here in Ashfall Peaks. The root can come in any element and because it's a melee one gun, it comes with two of them that you can change between and it also must be charged before firing. Every shot of the root is worth its weight in gold and only costs you the one bullet. When they land, pure rage fills the air as a crescendo of lasers dance around the impact point. It deals extreme amounts of damage and has no concern for you or your enemy's well-being. Each shot is fired in a two round burst and spawns a number of projectiles that zigzag from the epicenter triggering a primary and secondary explosion, both of which deal high damage. When mobbing this gun is deadly and is great value for ammo too, especially when you rock Ricochet Amara who can essentially double the explosions or modes who can amplify the size and damage of them. It typically downs multiple enemies in just one shot and it annihilates Captain Tron. Overall, it's a great sniper rifle, I'd say easily the best in the game and it's also a heck of fun to wield. Now to the Beacon, a melee one pistol that must be charged before firing and has an increased chance to drop from Jarek Logan, who you fired around in this area of Blood Sun Canyon but you'll need to take a jump pad located here to get to him. The beacon is like the hell shot from the base game in many ways, similar magazine size, same high fire rate, but there is a couple of key differences. The first being rather than only coming in incendiary and shock elements, the beacon comes in the mall, which means you can get the perfect one for each boss or that takedown. It also deals splash damage, which is something Moe's can make use of, and anyone wanting to build around splash damage weapons. It can tear through enemies very quickly and even produces elemental novas around you each time you reload. Overall, it's a great pistol that deals good splash damage at a high rate of knots. Up next, we have the Contained Blast, a Torg assault rifle that can come in all of the elements, including non elemental. Like most of these, it can drop from the world, but it also has an increased chance to drop from Abadokas, who you fired around in this area of Ashfall Peaks. The Contained Blast is a blast, it just is. It's like the Purple Stranger, but turned to the max, firing a large number of projectiles per shot, of which one of them will explode, and the rest will stick to them, awaiting their detonation. The projectiles are quite spread like that of a shotgun, meaning it's better if you're close, but when they all land, this thing shreds through health bars and is a lot of fun to use. It typically comes with a double penetrating prefix, consuming 2 ammo per shot, 
but you can even go beyond that by picking up the variant that fires double the projectiles at the cost of 3 ammo per shot. That's what I'm using here and it really is doing some work. That's the one I would aim for but anyone you get will deal a good chunk of damage at a decent pace. Now on to the Unkempt Herald, another weapon to make its return from Borderlands 2 and has an increased chance to drop from Cabadord, who you fight in this area of Blood Sun Canyon. Like most guns it can come in any element and always explodes on impact. A standard version will consume 3 ammo per shot but you can get one that will consume 4 with added projectiles. Speaking of the projectiles, they are spread along a narrow plane and get wider the longer they travel. To make use of this and to hit its maximum damage potential, you want to ensure that you are far enough away from your opponents that all projectiles hit your target. If you're too close, some will be underneath others and you'll be missing out. When in the sweet spot, the damage is high and although the magazine is small and the fire rate is on the slow side, the damage is high enough for you not to notice or not to even care. It's not quite what it was in Borderlands 2 but it's definitely still great and with it you can not only blow up your enemies with ease but you also get that nice feeling of nostalgia. Mm, nostalgia. The Flipper is another of the many great guns this DLC has to offer. It's manufactured by Maliwan and can come in every element. It has an increased chance to drop from Minosaur, who you fight around in this area of Blood Sun Canyon. The Flipper is a powerful SMG that becomes increasingly more powerful the longer you hold down the trigger. As you hold it down, more and more projectiles will be added to each shot for no extra cost to ammo. It starts at 1, goes to 4 quickly, before peaking at 9 and also deals splash damage, which I was surprised to find out. Because of that unique pattern, a larger magazine will allow you to fire the 9 projectiles for longer, so any magazine boosting artifact or mod will go well with it. Overall, it's an all-round great gun, one of the best SMGs in the game, and can tear through bosses and enemies alike. Coming in hot, what's that? It's the Gargoyle, another great DLC 3 pistol that has an increased chance to drop from Dick and Goyle, who you fired around in this point of Blood Sun Canyon. The Gargoyle is standard COV carnage, a high fire rate, blistering power and that weird smell. It can only come in corrosive unfortunately, but that does make it great at chewing through armor and it definitely doesn't lack elsewhere. When firing, its bullets will stick to your target dealing damage as they do so, then explode dealing more damage a little bit later and it will also send forth a wall of acid along with some springs that always deal a hefty chunk of damage. It can come in times 1, times 2 or even times 3 variants, each consuming 2, 3 or 4 ammo respectively. It can rip through health bars extremely quickly, with armored health bars melting away in very short spaces of time, thanks to its high fire rate. However, that same high fire rate and ammo consumption cause it to run out of ammo quicker than other guns, but that's the COV way. Now to something for the flak mains, the Robin's Call, a Jacob's shotgun that can never come with an element and has an increased chance to drop from Garadin Lotch, who you fight around about here in Ashfall Peaks. The Robin's Call is like the Lucian's Call and Rowan's Call, with the fact that it returns a bullet to your magazine on critical hits. Although that bullet is usually 4, considering it does consume 4 ammo per shot with the standard version. It deals heavy damage, and thanks to that unique effect, accurate players will never have to reload and they'll also be rewarded with ricocheting bullets when they land criticals. It also fires in a 2 round burst, doubling its damage without any sacrifice. And if you want the best one, I'd look out for one with a high pallet count, something in the double digits, but whatever Robin's Call you get, you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Moving on to the frequency, another shotgun, we're going back to back here, that has an increased chance to drop from Lectricor, who you can find chilling out here in the Obsidian Forest. The frequency can come in any element, and because it's a melee one gun, 
comes in two of them that you can switch between and must be charged before firing. Speaking of firing, the frequency fires wide sound waves that ripple through the air. When you drop the bass, as in get kills with it, the frequency rises too and this thing will up its burst fire count up to 4. When that happens, this thing will obliterate through your enemies, destroying their insides and becoming too powerful that it will crash your game, or at least it did mine. It's a lot of fun, I never thought seeing my game crash would bring a smile to my face, and that's a credit to it. Last up, the Proprietary License, a Hyperion SMG that can come in any of the elements and has an increased chance to drop from Hydragoian, who you can find here in the Obsidian Forest. The Proprietary License is another powerful weapon from the DLC, but I find its unique effect or rather effects to be what stands out about it. It's a culmination of every manufacturer merged into one weapon. The no delay 4 round burst fire from a dial Nighthawken, the stickies from Torg, ricocheting bullets from Jacobs, elements from Maliwan and of course it is manufactured by Hyperion. I don't really see Atlas fitting in there but that is definitely enough for it and all those pieces play a part to make what is a strong and truly unique weapon. It has high DPS and fires quicker than you would expect with critical hits rewarding you the most thanks to the Jacobs trait that's merged into it. It produces a number of different damage sources that there will always be one you can count on, and it's definitely a jack of all trades, but it is close to mastering them all. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the 10 best weapons in Borderlands 3's third DLC. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.